because I'm not pointing back at the lift, yeah, I'm pointing still away from the lift because the variable <coughs> will actually, if that is the genuine place, the vario there or there somewhere, depending on your vario, will be at its worst. Yeah. So as you come round and you think, it doesn't feel very good now, vario's down, the audio, listening to the audio, it's going down, sounds like it's the wrong place, and I'll just wait a second or two and I want to go this way. How do I choose to go that way? I've drawn it perfectly because that's what I want you to do. But I want to go that way because it's after the point where the vario is low. It's 45 degrees, 90 degrees, depending on how fast you're flying, what the vario is like, you've got to experiment. But also, it's 270 degrees to where I started, and I'm looking for other indications as well. And uh, I don't know how... Uh, how uh, many of you live your life through rules of thumb? To me, they're really important because I'm not very good at complicated stuff. Yeah? And so I always say, if I turn the wrong way, 270 degrees, I always love the wings. Yeah? Not always, but nearly always. Yeah? And then wait a second or two and turn again. Yeah? Generally the same way. Generally the same way. <coughs> now, for those of you who are beginning, this is dead easy. right? You just do it and it works. Yeah? Don't think about it because you'll make it more difficult. And as soon as you start to start, as soon as you start to make it complicated, it becomes complicated. In fact, getting into the thermal isn't complicated. It just requires a little bit of experimentation to get in there. We're flying a slow glider, don't forget, at the moment. We're flying a K21, K6, Astia, something like that. <coughs> so when we come round, we come, we level the wings for a second or two. We wait a second or two, yeah, and then we roll in again. Now, I would normally roll the same way. Did anybody go the other way? And if you fly with me and you reverse the turn, yeah, I'll tell you, you're only allowed to do it twice a year. <laughs> because it's nearly always wrong. Yeah? Yeah, and so if you only do it twice a year, you only do it wrong twice a year. And the reason I think of that is because I'm trying to build in my mind a little plan, a little map where the thermal is. And when I turn here, I turn around this way, and I know where I started. Mm -hmm. I can visualize where I started. <coughs> I started there, over there somewhere. If I reverse the turn, I'm lost. I can't remember where I started now. So, I don't, so I've actually lost the value of all the information I already picked up. Of course, sometimes it is right to turn the other way, but not really. So we straighten up for a minute, and then we turn again. And we just see if we've improved it and we see if we've improved the situation. And if we have improved it, we can do the same again. So this, don't forget, is the technique for locating the thermal. This presupposes two things. One is that you can control the speed and attitude of the glider. That's really important. And the other one is that you can roll in and out of the turn in a fairly sort of civilized way, in a conventional way. Now, I have to be a little bit careful what I say. I'm just having a quick look to make sure that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, some years ago, I was in... Uh, in we, we do a lot of flying in the mountains. So we do a lot of training in the mountains. And we do a lot of converting people into flying in the mountains. Yeah. We could easily, in the days of Sedani, we could convert six, seven, eight, nine people a week from flatland pilots to mountain pilots. <coughs> and one of the things you have to do is to convert them into thermal. And in Sudan, one year, we had a bunch of guys from a large club not too far from here who came with their own instructor. And by the end of the week, they hadn't flown any of the little tasks that we organised for beginners just around the valley to get the hang of it. And uh, the instructor said to me, look, I'm really having struggle with here. Do you think you can fly with me and we'll have a look at sort of give me a bit of a heads up on how to do it? I said, yeah, sure, fine. This afternoon we'll fly. So we went off in, this, in his two-seater and we started to thermal. And we went up and I thought, hmm, it's really difficult because he's a deputy CFI at his club. How do I break the news to him that we need to start by using the stick and rudder together? <laughs> <laughs> and, and one of the reasons he couldn't get in the thermos is because he wasn't flying coordinated. It's a disease of the instructor because they hardly ever fly. They only do 90 degrees turns, yeah? <laughs> so they, anyway, it's, it is, it's just to illustrate the point, one of the reasons he couldn't soar is because he couldn't control the attitude and he couldn't roll in and out of the turn accurately. Now, it's, it is, it's amusing, but 
if you can't roll in and out of the turn accurately, how can you put the glider where you want it? And how can you remember where it was? So don't underestimate how important it is to fly accurately. Second thing is when you go into the turn, and all instructors should remember this, when you go into the turn like this, as we roll into the turn, we use the ailerons and rudder, beginners, which is what you do, isn't it? Yeah, we use the ailerons and rudders. And what else do we do? Pull back, pull stick. Pull back. You've got diamonds, you, didn't, you should know that. <laughs> but as we go into the turn, we ease back on the stick a little, because if we don't, the nose will go down the glider accelerate because we're out of equilibrium and we've all looked at the <coughs> picture of course. So what happens then is when we roll into the turn, if we let it accelerate, it, it does not a circle but an ellipse. We get round to here, we look down and think, oh God, I'm going too fast. Yeah. And we pull the stick back and we put the turn over here. But we think we started over there. We think that that is there. And it's just another one of those little illustrations that if your flying isn't accurate, it's very difficult to do it. So work on it so it's accurate. And even if you think you're a real hot shot, yeah, I bet you you're not doing it well enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because I've flown with some real hot shots here, yeah, and you sit and talk about it. And I know, uh, uh, again, in my own flight, I had made a conversion <coughs> from the open class back into the standard class, having flown open class for a number of years. Because I also got a bronze medal in the World Championship open class, but he didn't mention it. <laughs> so, so, so I went back in the standard class and I got a silver medal in the standard class, but we don't mention that, right? <laughs> I noticed one thing, and I noticed one thing was really important. I was, my turn entries were shit. It was rubbish. And I just couldn't do it. And I said, what's happening to me? I keep dishing out the turn. And the, it was a timing thing, you know? In the open class, when you rolled and you pulled up and you rolled, the time it took to dissipate the energy and get the bank on was much longer than in the little standard class fighter gliders. Yeah? And I was going like a fighter into these things, just sort of going sideways up into the thermal, and nothing was working out. And you have to relearn. You have to go, actually, that's not the way to do it. It's not the technique. So the technique requires you to fly accurately. And in location, the important thing to remember is don't be trying to take big chunks. Yeah? Big chunks are OK. So having located the thermal, we then, we then need to refine it. We need to refine it for two reasons. <coughs> one is to get the rate of climb up, and the other one is to make sure we stay in the thermal. Yeah? The thermal has an outflow. In the top half of the thermal there's an outflow, in the bottom half there's an inflow. If we're near the top part of the thermal and we're to one side, we will get taken out of the thermal. <coughs> we flow out of the thermal. If we are entering at the lower part of the thermal, we get drawn into the thermal, and if you want to get that refined, I can talk about that as well. But to refine it, we use quite a different technique. In this one, the information that we got came from the vario, a little bit from the sensation, a little bit from the noise. It came from the audio, and we turned and we used a lot, uh, we, we put a lot of emphasis on what the vario was telling us yeah, in this situation because there was a very big difference to one side to the other. We have a similar situation with <coughs> our thermal, there's a surrounding area, and now we're here. Yeah. And th on this side of the thermal we're getting six, and on this side of the thermal we're getting three. And we want to refine it, we want to get into the middle of this one. The technique is quite different. The technique now is not one of straightening and tightening, straightening and tightening, the one is just Small reduction in the bank, small increase in the bank. Rarely more than 10 degrees. You should be thermally at 30 to 40 degrees, something like that. So rarely more than 10 degrees. Yeah. Uh, but trying to do it on the feel of the thermal. Because there isn't enough difference in the vario reading for the instrument to give you all that useful information. There might be in a really good audio. It might be enough in an audio. So as you come around, you, you're using that information, but you're also using the information of feeling the glider. You're feeling the glider both lift a little, and you're feeling it roll a little. You know that now you're coming into the thermal. If you are really, if it's a big thermal, you could ease a little bit then. Mm, doesn't often work. What I wait, like to do is I wait until I feel the lifting peaking, and I feel the rolling peak, and I tighten up a little bit. I tighten up a little bit, and really critical, weight. Yeah. Having put the bank on weight, 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 
wait at least for 270 degrees of the turn, and then when you come round to here, you can start to ease it off. This is actually much more difficult than this, which is why people go round and round and round the middle of the films. Yeah? And you can do it doing this as well. But when you ease it off, you don't ease it off all in one go. Yeah? You let it come off over half a turn. So when you come round the turn, you tighten the glider up, you bring it round tightly, you bring it <coughs> round, bring it round, bring it round, and then you just gently ease some of the bank off. What you're trying to do <coughs> is not lose what you've got. You don't want to lose what you've got. You don't want to take one go at getting the glider in the middle of the film. But that's the centre of our thermal there. And what I'm trying to do is move the centre that way a little bit. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to visualise it. I want to bring the centre a bit more into the thermal rather than try to take the glider around the other side of the thermal. And I'm quite happy to take four or five, six, seven turns. Mm -hmm. In reality, you do it on every turn. Yeah. Once you get to be a good really good cross-country pilot, really good glider pilot, you do it nearly every turn. Because whenever you feel the thermal do something, you react to it, you know, and you tighten up into it a little bit. If you fly with a really good pilot, you'll see that the, um, the ailerons and rudder hardly move, except when it's just rolling in a bit and rolling out a bit. But it happens on nearly every turn, just to keep refining it a bit. So what's the important difference? The important difference, small movements, small changes to the turn, use slightly different information, different inputs to help you. Here, larger movements <coughs> of the circle, so we're making bigger bites at it, and we're probably using the barrier much more. I'll just touch on what happens with the other thermals, with the uh, hot air thermals, the anticyclonic gas. The thermals and anticyclonic days, or stable days, or the thermals in hot climes, they require energy. They need power from the sun to make them work. And when the air is not that unstable, as soon as the power dissipates, the thermal stops. So they're, they're relatively short. But also, they're quite strong. So when, they're, when these thermals, which are quite short, yeah, when you fly into one of these, if you're lucky enough to fly into the middle, you wait for the surge, you wait for the surge of the thermal, and you turn as soon as you feel it. Yeah. As soon as